Hello and welcome to this episode of Marketed Not Live, the podcast for marketers who really want to know, well, from their own community, what's working now and importantly, what's around the corner. Now, in every episode, we bring you a guest to talk about a specific marketing topic that's really going to help you broaden your horizons. So, you know, if you're into social media, you can learn about all things SEO or customer experience, podcasts, emails, whatever it is, just from listening to your peers. Now, we've got the speakers from last year's event and from this year's Marketed Live, which, of course, takes place on Tuesday, the 25th of September this year, 2018, uh, at the wonderful, magnificent Nottingham Contemporary. Now, we'll also have you with us, hopefully. That's you, our attendees, and also the wannabe attendees, those people who haven't quite booked a ticket yet. Shame on you. Uh, because, basically, your experience as marketers is just as valid as anyone else's. And so if you want to be on this podcast, all you've got to do is drop us a line at hey at marketed.live. Now, as you know, this show is sponsored by Podcast Websites, the industry leading platform for creating a world class audio marketing uh, channel for yourself or your clients. According to Edison Research, 75% of people who listen to a podcast actually take action just by the host suggesting that they do something. That seems pretty good to me. So if you're thinking about starting a podcast, go and check out podcastwebsites.com. All of the information that you need on how to do that is there. And for listeners of this podcast and attendees of Marketed Live, you can get a 25% discount off membership for life, for life, as long as you uh, do that before the 31st of October 2018. So without further ado, let's get on with this show. Today, we have two of the nicest guys that I've ever met. I've not met that many people, but still, they're two of the most nicest guys I've ever met. They're great speakers, they're great marketers. They spoke at last year's Marketed Live. I'm thrilled to welcome Andrew and Pete. Woo! But Paul, but Paul, who's nicest? Me or Pete? Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> 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 so I'm not going to be drawn into the questions like that because it, the thing is, is that if it was, who do I prefer, Dan or Lloyd, it's obvious, it's Lloyd, right? I mean, that's fairly, that's fairly obvious, but for you two, I can't actually choose. Oh. Yeah, it's funny, that's the first time we've ever been described as the nicest guys. It's usually like words like crazy or wacky. Or annoying. Mm. So. Well, I did think about annoying, but I thought that was a bit rude. <laughs> <laughs> that makes you the nicest guy in marketing paul because most people wouldn't think <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah thank you i'll take that i'll take that someone else said that to me the other week i can't remember it might have been you pete actually when we we're at cma i can't remember <laughs> you're anyway. the nicest person ever mm. thank you thank you guys um so welcome to the the podcast um it is a new thing for us as marketed live and we're just trying lots of things out really you guys have a podcast, which I'm sure we'll get on to, to later. But before we start, why don't you introduce yourselves to the people watching and the people listening uh, to, to this show, as if they didn't know you already. But you know, just in case, tell us who you are. Awesome. Well, hello, guys. My name is Andrew. And my name is Pete. Together we are Andrew, Andrew and Pete. Pete. Hey, we've said that a few times now. We love helping small business owners predominantly be more creative with their content marketing. So our kind of belief is that content marketing isn't this kind of novel idea anymore. And if you're just doing the exact same thing that everyone else has done before you, you're just going to blend into the content noise that's out there these days. So we love teaching people exactly why it's important to stand out, but we don't just stop at the why. We actually teach them how they can actually make a standout brand, make standout content, and actually just get noticed in their industry through their content marketing. Pretty Not good. And, and how, how did you get into it? How long have you been going? How did you actually get into content marketing itself? Well, actually, it was like straight away. So we spent the first few years of our business, we came straight out of university, messed about for a few years trying to find our feet, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. um, and then we decided to go into kind of branding, design you and, and marketing. Feet, did you? I never found my feet. No. And um, <laughs> sat a weird church out. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm a little shy user. So what? Get over it. And, um, 
basically, we started um, doing content marketing. Uh, we also went networking and did all the things that you're supposed to do when you start your own business. And quite frankly, we got sweet FA out of our content marketing efforts. So we had a blog that we thought was pretty good at the time. We had uh, email marketing funnels. We had a newsletter. We had uh, blogs and Twitter account and LinkedIn profiles and all that. Google shizzle. Plus. Google Plus. Uh -huh. And to be honest, Bebo. for like years, we did everything that we thought, you know, we should be doing, but we weren't getting any results like whatsoever. So it was kind of like soul crushing. And well, we were actually getting results and getting businesses from networking. So when we went networking, we'd always do things a little bit differently. We'd go dressed up as zombies or we'd throw chocolate about the room or take fireworks. Once we even had an indoor firework, which was pretty crazy, pretty special. And to be honest, we got this huge reputation in our local area and we got all of our business that way. So we got really frustrated that... Uh, we weren't getting anything online, right? Because that's the dream, right? Have a blog, people find it, you become a millionaire overnight. That was the dream. Uh, never quite got there, unfortunately. But we had like this switch, right? So we thought, well, if we're doing that, on, that networking, why don't we do that online? And the moment we started to do that crazy stuff that we did at networking, but online, that's when things start to pay off for us. That's when we got our first comments on our blog. <laughs> That's when we got our first like growth spurt with, with our audience. And we got subscribers and fans and people actually wanting to come running up to us and go, oh, it's Andrew and Pete. <laughs> and and people do all the time. Spread. Exactly. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it was this amazing shift for us. And something that we think everyone is, guilty of at some point uh, most people they'll start blogging they'll try and get good at it but it's not necessarily just the case of being good or great it's actually a case of either being the best which you're probably not going to do because most people have blogged before you and are much better at it than you or being a little bit different and that's where people can really stand out and make noise make an impact get remembered and grow their audience and that's what we love to help people teach and that's how we got into content as well. And so, you, you know, you're talking there about standing out and doing the, the crazy stuff that you've done in, in person. And, you know, we can kind of see how that, that gets results. What about people who feel a bit nervous about doing that crazy stuff? You know, that they don't feel it much, matches their personality to do stuff that's a bit mental, right? How are they going to stand out? Have you got any tips for yes. people like that? Yeah, yeah. So we, we love that question. We get asked that question a lot. And a oh, lot of people... boring then, isn't it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, we've got a great answer for it, so it's yeah. all good. A lot of people will say to us, like, I can't be fun, or I can't be like you, or I'm not wacky enough to do that, or I'm not creative enough. And we're not saying, do it, do, do it like Andrew and Pete's doing it. We don't actually want that. We don't want you to copy us, right? But we are saying, you have to be different in a way. And there's lots of different ways to be different rather than just kind of making people laugh. It's a case of stop looking at people in your industry that have kind of come before you and having that as kind of your benchmark to emulate. Start like just, it sounds a bit cheesy, but start like um, crafting a different path. Yeah. So take inspiration from different industries. Mm -hmm. Find out what's unique about you. So for some people it's about the most analytical, in-depth, research-driven pieces of content. Mm -hmm. For some people, it's about the visuals. It's about sharing these amazing infographics. Some people, it's about these funny videos that mm -hmm. link back to something serious. For other people, it's about this empowering vibe to them. Yeah. Like, find out what's unique about you and how you're going to stand out in your competitive It's about industry. adding some kind of personality, right? So a lot of people, when they come to do it, especially like B2B marketing, they'll just strip all the personality out of it. And they'll think that that's being professional when it's not, right? Professional doesn't mean boring. A lot of people think professional and boring are the same thing. And a lot of people think like fun and unprofessional are the same thing. And it's mm. not like you can be professional and you can know exactly what you're talking about and get people results. You don't have to do it in this kind of 
boring, monotone, corporate speak kind of way. Yes, I love that. <laughs> so, okay, so some of the things that you mentioned there, things that stand out to me are things like language. How can people use language to uh, get some of their personality a- across? Mm-hmm. How important is language and the language that people use? so important yeah it's like everything you do right so from the words you use the language you use the visuals you use what you wear what you dress like how you sound how confidently you portray yourself what's the background setting in your videos or how good is the quality of your microphone if you're doing a podcast all these things help to affect your brand but it's not your actual brand if that makes sense those are just like the the aesthetic pieces that almost are there to portray what your brand is. And the brand is that kind of core message that you want people to remember you by or that gut feeling that you want people to remember you by. And the funny thing is, um, like you've probably heard of that quote, like your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And yeah, it's true, but it's also kind of scary, right? Because you you can never have 100% control in that. So we don't know what you're saying about us behind our back, Paul, right? We've had stories, but we don't really know. You could be saying all manner of things about us, but actually, when we ask people like to summarize us in three words, they usually say the exact three words or like synonyms of those three words that we actually want to portray, which is really funny, right? And we can almost guarantee this every time with any kind of person that's familiar with our brand. And so the way that we get that across is through all these other things. So your brand, once you have that nailed down, what is that core message? What are the brand values that you want to portray and who to? That acts as a filter. And that's where you start. So when when we're coming up with like the content marketing process, the brand is pretty much the first place we start with everyone. Yeah. Because then that, that acts as a filter for every other decision yeah. after that, mm-hmm. from thinking of content ideas, your audience, what you're going to be selling, how you're selling it to them, what the sales funnels are going to say on them, everything. Because a lot of people think that we're just like these two crazy creative people that just have like all these like harebrained ideas and they'll go and implement that. But it's not true, right? Everything that we do from like the blow up aliens to um, the themes of our tour to yeah, to our content, to our emails, from our gifts. It's all like deliberate and it's all around crafting this brand that stands out amongst the competition. And that brand is very much us, right? So we kind of have it easy because it's not like we have to fake it. It's like we don't have this huge team and that we need to teach exactly how to talk like us. It's very much our brand is us. And that's what small businesses really have kind of an advantage over the bigger businesses where they do have to make sure this kind of brand is like spread out throughout the team. But if, especially if you're a a one man band or a small team, like use that to your advantage. Use the fact that you can use your own personality in your business to stand out. Exactly. Because that's, if you can resonate with people, that's the whole point of social media and content really. It's Mm -hmm. if people come onto your website, they find your content, you stumble across it. It's like, do they resonate with you? Do they want more? And if you can't deliver that, then you're going to fail. And that's why we can outperform companies that have 360,000 employees that make billions and billions in revenue. We can do one post that gets more interaction than all of the other posts. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> all it's of their so, other posts. It's just all of their posts. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the fact that they have so much potential, right? they have hundreds of thousands of people in the audience and they have that many employees that could give their content a nudge. It's like, they don't, they don't get it, right? And this is why as a smaller business, you can have this huge advantage. And if you're thinking about how to do this with your clients, I know a lot of people listening to this podcast are probably marketers that have marketing clients as well um well, clients in other industries that is something that you really need to tackle head on like what is the brand what is the message and how are we going to get that across in a more personal way <laughs> even though i'm outsourcing that that is a really big challenge um but there's, there's things you can do as well with that. so some a lot, a lot of people sort of come to me and 
say from time to time if i'm if, you know, if i'm running a workshop if i'm talking to clients you know, our product is boring or it's not sexy enough what you're yeah. saying is that that doesn't matter that actually it's more about looking at the the business the ethos the way in which that the company operates yeah. Do, does that make it a, 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 an easier sell um, to to an audience or an easy you know to potential customers to, to inject that personality in you know even if that product is slightly boring <laughs> and uh, and other yeah. um, you know another question to you would be is there any product that you can't use content marketing for yeah okay so this is really interesting topic so. First of all, if you do have a boring product, or if you're in a boring industry, fantastic, because it makes it really easy for you to stand out. Right. Right? If you are in marketing, it's really hard to stand out because people have done everything, right? Marketing people are creative. It's really saturated. If you're in a boring industry, fantastic, right? This is a huge advantage because you do one slight thing that's remarkable and everyone goes crazy, right? You're that guy that does that amazing thing. Instantly, you stand out. You're the best. Awesome. But what we say is there's two types of industries here, right? There's content rich industries and there's content poor industries. So if you're in a content rich industry, that's something like marketing, knitting, travel, fitness. Basically, if you talk about how you do what you do, people are going to be interested, mm -hmm. right? So if we, we do marketing, we talk about how we do marketing. People listen because they want to know about marketing to grow their business. Easy peasy to come up with content ideas. However, if we do that in the same way as every other marketer, we're going to fall behind, right? Yeah. So our challenge is, it's really saturated in this industry. How do we do it in a way, deliver that content, but in a way that's a little bit different, right? Maybe a little bit more like an edutaining way like we do, mm -hmm. or a more analytical way, or a more informal way, or whatever it is, an outdoorsy way. <laughs> um, and then on the flip side, you've got content poor industries so this is like the really really boring industries where you kind of think oh my god if i talk about this people are gonna fall asleep like accountant is our favorite example yeah like ah uh, it's really tough right <laughs> mortgage advisors oh, oh, i was gonna yeah. ask you about accounting as well so, Go many, on. <laughs> so many things like that right and now the, the, the thing is here like a lot of products also fall under this category because if you make let's say shorts you can't really talk much about shorts all that much, right? Because it gets a little bit boring and repetitive, right? Here's a blog about how to take shorts off, how to take shorts on. Like, like it's not this. That's all your blog content. Gone, I feel like that's really. a challenge. That. I, I I don't know where we're going with this, but yeah, I, you know. So, a really great example of this is um, Chubby's, and if you haven't heard of them, go check them out. And their content stamp is like the one thing that they're known for content wise on Facebook, they create these amazing videos about all the fun things that you can do at the weekend, right? For example, the new Lilo float where you can go speedboat and then it sends you up in the air and you're basically like flying. It's freaking cool. Another example is a video all about this place in Texas where it's like a drive-in cinema, but it's a huge pool where you can go and watch Jaws and a little rubber ring and there's like fake sharks going around in this pool. So like, it's the scariest thing ever. It's at night, you can see the little uh, fin of a shark. Is it da, 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 da. Like that sounds terrifying, but amazing. <laughs> like they create tons and tons of different content, like the top things you can do this weekend, whatever. But the point is all of those things happen in shorts, right? So yeah. all of the videos, all the models are wearing these cool shorts and you're thinking, they look freaking awesome in these shorts, right? It's this an aspiring brand image. It's fun. And the videos itself are highly shareable. So all of their videos are like semi-viral or viral and you know, like they're just really, really great content. And now the point there is, if you've got a boring brand or if you're in a content poor industry, you can, you can stand out by not talking about how you do what you do, right? You need to find other things to talk about. And that comes from your brand a lot of the time. And part of your brand is your avatar. So like, what do they want to know? What are their problems? Um, and how are you trying to stand out and different with your brand? Chubbies, they're all about entertainment and having a good time. 
So the content makes sense to be these Facebook videos. So something like accounting then, you know, what you're saying is, you know, maybe not talk about the budget or tax or, you know, the implement, the implications of that, but more what sort of, um, the weird thing that we did with a P60 form or how to turn a P45 into a paper airplane and send it to your previous employer, that sort of thing. Kind of, but, but not really. So, so, <laughs> so it, so it all needs to come from the brand. So, it's not like we can give an exact example without knowing what the brand is, but say like this accountant was all around helping spiritual entrepreneurs. Maybe that's what this accountant has been built around. Stop talking about um, how to do your taxes as a spiritual entrepreneur. Start talking about the problems that spiritual entrepreneurs have. I don't know where this random example came yeah, from. It popped into my head. Like, what is a spiritual <laughs> entrepreneur? Uh, it's a, it's a, Spirit, someone that's spirited that also has a business. No, it's that. <laughs> He's talking about ghosts. I'm talking uh, about like, um, like psychics. Or, okay, right. Oh, uh, okay. Or uh, holistic no, remedies. remedies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I've got a question for you. I've got another question for you. Sorry. Do, have you, do you know of Lillian Psychic Medium? No. Okay, on Facebook, everyone's got to go and do this. Go and look up Lillian Psychic Medium. She's from. Yeah the north of England, she's got about half a million fans of her page. She oh. does Facebook Lives every evening where she channels the spirits. Oh. And it's, it's a masterclass in how to do a Facebook Live. Oh my God, your Wait. alien started moving as you said that. Well, hello. I'm not even joking. Did you see that? <laughs> Did you see that? See it, no. Watch that on the replay. That okay. was <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but that's a really good example of someone doing content really, really well. She's a spiritual entrepreneur. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, like, as a very basic example here, if your audience was just like small businesses as an accountant, you could talk about other small business issues, mm -hmm. right? And that would help to draw people in. And yes, you can talk about financial stuff, but you don't have to always be talking about just that. Yes. That makes sense. Right. Like, yeah. for example, a graphic designer. I could talk about graphic design all the time. To be honest, Paul, are you really that interested in learning about graphic design? Probably not, right? Because you don't need to do graphic design. That's why you hire a graphic designer, yeah. right? You might want to learn how to do some social graphics yourself, but that's kind of the limit. Mm -hmm, sure. Graphic designer, you know what they could do? If a graphic designer wanted to work with other marketers, a graphic designer could go and take like some awesome content, collaborate with someone like yourself, take some of your best content, and turn that into a highly visual PDF or infographic or slide deck and share that. Wouldn't that be so much better for you and for other people in who she wants to attract? She would then be giving out information that is really helpful to them and looks great and basically show kind of showcasing herself and saying, hey, I'm awesome at graphic design work and here's some helpful content. Now you like me, great, we all win. Yeah, a really great place to start is start by thinking about the wider problems that your um, client base has. Especially if you're in like the content poor industry, then what other problems can you solve? And that might not be you having that knowledge, but that's where you can get into doing cool collaborations. Because collaborations are a, great, are a great way of just reaching out to people. Like some of our biggest business wins have come from doing fun collaborations with people. Yeah. And another way, like if you're scared of being a little bit more risque as well, risque. if you do risque or risky, risque, like risque means a different word to risky. Maybe. <laughs> but if you want to, if you want to go back to the shorts coming off <laughs> video, <laughs> if you want to be a bit more risky or risque, <laughs> Um, sometimes a collaboration is a great way to do that because the blame can kind of go on them, <laughs> if that makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. If we did like a fun, wacky video about a social media tool, that's us doing that, not them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they can benefit from our creativity and that great content, but they don't have to put their neck on the line and think that they're being unprofessional. They're really not being unprofessional, but you know what I mean? So that's another cool way you can do it. Do, do you think that there's, 
too much noise that there's that there's you know people are speaking too too often and that people should maybe tone it down a bit and you know think about creating less but content that is better quality is is that you know because if i look at say the marketing industry right there's a hell of a lot of noise out there and i kind of think everyone's saying not everyone's saying the same thing you're clearly not but you know there's a lot of people that are saying the same thing regurgitating something that they've heard from somewhere else mm -hmm. and it all kind of filters into a big i don't know cloud of guff that uh, doesn't actually mean anything to anyone by the time they see it yeah. Yeah. What, what what's what's the answer to that and we're yeah. thinking specifically not just about marketing but other uh, industries that have to do marketing too yeah it's so true like if you look at the amount of content that's being produced now it is more than the time we have to consume it, right? So there's going to be content that doesn't get read or watched or listened to simply because there's too much for the amount of people in the world that could possibly listen to it, right? And you cannot fall into that kind of subset of content. And the content that falls into that subset of content is the content that is just exactly the same as everyone else. It's the stuff that's yeah, not necessarily boring, but just not same original. Way. It's same me. People don't, people right. don't notice people it. Are in the danger zone. Yeah. So <laughs> if you, uh, you kind of have to ask yourself, right? Are you just kind of blogging or podcasting or creating videos for the sake of doing it? Because you know it's a good thing to do. And if you are, you are probably creating less quality content than what you need to actually get noticed. So definitely, this actually came up when we were doing the last season of our podcast the Andrew Peach show, we were asking all these bloggers and marketers, what advice would you give for people that want to actually create content that stands out? And like 90% of them said, do less, but do it better. Yeah, which is really interesting. Yeah. Well, um, it's, it, the pressure's off then though, surely. I mean, there's pressure to create better content, but people, I think, feel a lot of pressure to write a blog a week or two weeks or whatever routine they've decided to, to fall into. Yeah. I, I'm not, content and so on. yeah, I'm not going to say spend less time on it. I think a lot of people might take that advice and think, great, I only need to do one blog a week now. We're <laughs> one not blog saying a month. That, oh yeah, one blog a month. We're not saying that. Like still do, still spend the amount of time you were doing on those weekly blogs to make one like freaking awesome blog. Yeah. yeah. Or one freaking awesome video. Yeah. yeah like I ideally you would spend more time making your content better. That's like what we're kind of want to do. We don't want to let our um, consistency drop, to be honest, of what we're producing. We think being consistent with your content is great. And we don't want people to listen to this and think, I only need to create like 12 pieces of content a year necessarily. But if you are going to create only 12 pieces of content a year, then make them bloody best pieces of content on the awesome. internet for that subject that you're creating on. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely true and recently we released a video on our YouTube um, channel all about blogging strategy based on that discussion and what you'll find is like there's nine really really important steps and one of those steps is writing it yeah and that's only like one section like the rest it's all about the research of which blog article is going to be the best one to write and then how do you promote that Mm -hmm. afterwards and that's where people lack they yeah. think blogging is about the writing of the content yeah and not all the other stuff around it like yeah. that that's actually the more important thing and if you're in if you are in marketing go and check out backlinko brian dean's backlinko blogs like he doesn't blog all that often but when he does they are seriously the best articles mind-blowing like just amazing especially p is the biggest fanboy it's insane i i, I like... lose weekends reading his blogs <laughs> they're that long i don't know how really many good. he does it might do maybe i don't know i think just... he does even less than one a month but, but, but it's good stuff it's, but it's good quality best, really, yeah, yeah. really really good so i don't think you can do one a month but they're just going to be the same as what you've been doing but then <laughs> yeah. the argument also comes into play whereby you know, we can't all be doing that to a degree and all winning. If we all did that, again, it's, it's just the benchmark is, that's what essentially we're all trying to do. And the benchmark is getting higher and higher and higher. So the so better versus different. This is, this is why we have this debate of better versus different, right? So you can't necessarily always be better. You can't 
even if you created the best blog ever right now on a subject, you still probably can't even get ranked for it because someone else has done it before. They've got more backlinks to it than you. They've got more comments on it than you. They've got a bigger domain authority than you. And you know what? You're kind of screwed. So unless you're saying something really remarkable that's going to get shared, that is like your anti-SEO strategy almost, right? Nice. So there's two different debates there. And Jay Kunzo mm -hmm. has this really, really great quote that I really wish I'd stole uh, or come up with. Um, I love Jay Kunzo. He's awesome. He won a series of our podcast and pay homage to him. Uh, I'm going to give a quote of his. And he basically was saying that... I feel like you're um, stalling while you remember this quote. I am. Uh, <laughs> go on. If you want... <laughs> imagine, this is a reasonably imagine, short podcast. Yeah. <laughs> imagine... I feel like if we've put the pressure on him now. Everyone um, in the room playing the trumpet. Right? Everyone in the room, they're playing the trumpet. There's a lot of noise in that room. Can I just say this is probably not a quote at this moment. Well, it's definitely a story. <laughs> it is a story, yeah. And the longest quote. Are you going to let me get on with You're it? You're going to struggle putting this on, a, on an Instagram image. <laughs> <laughs> There's backstory oh, and then the quote. Oh, my God. <laughs> so imagine an everyone was in the room playing the trumpet. If you go into that room, pick up a trumpet, and try and join in and stand out, well, you're not going to. You're just going to blow into the noise, right? Whereas if you came into the room, you picked up the guitar, then you would stand out, right? So the quote, I'm going to paraphrase the quote. So the quote noise. is, noise isn't the problem. Sameness is, right? Because we, we still have Instagram. to make that noise. We still have to make music, beautiful melodies, but can we choose a different instrument? Can we do it in a different way to everyone else? Can you be that one that stands out in the room of trumpets? Excellent. Well done. <laughs> well done, yeah. That was supposed to be inspiring. It was, it was inspiring. We'll, we'll put some, I thought, but I feel like some music. That. We'll put some music behind it as the build up to the uh, killer quote bit uh, that sort of never really happened as a quote. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me ask you, let me ask you, because you, one of the things you do is you do lots of different types of content. So I wanted to ask you, in your opinion, what sort of content is actually working right now? What's your, what's the thing that is working for you? What's the thing you enjoy doing the most? That sort of thing. For us personally, video all the way for us, it's just like the best way to get across our brand, <laughs> what we're all about, kind of the style and who we're actually creating that content for. I'm not saying that I don't think there is a kind of one size fits all for content for the people. It might be podcasts for the people. It might still be a written blog. We know we've got a member of atomic that's an editor and she's absolutely killing it with blogging still. So I'm not saying that video is right for everyone, but for us personally, we wish we had started video like five years before we did. Uh, <laughs> the moment that we did um, video, like our sales, sales cycle like yeah. became a lot shorter because people could just instantly get our personality much better than a blog yeah. they could and understand who they live like. either like actually edited video i think yeah. a lot of people are jumping on this live train because they think they're going to get like a lot of reach on facebook just because it's alive and again it's kind of going back to the blogging for blogging sake you're going live for live's sake when live isn't the answer to all of our algorithm whereas if the content's rubbish on your live then it's going to flop and you've done a podcast as well, a great podcast, if I may say so. Thank you. And of course, if I was to define it, it would be that it's different. It's a game show. Mm -hmm. Yes. Was that a conscious decision to try and do something so different that it would be more noticeable and have a greater impact? Based on, based on what you're saying, I'm guessing the answer is yes. Yeah, <laughs> basically. So I, I was kind of the story behind the podcast is I was story not quote. It's that um, <laughs> I was kind of pushing Pete towards a podcast. A lot of our audience have been asking for a podcast. They wanted to kind of take us on the go. We had always been really focused around YouTube, so we didn't want to like distract ourselves too much from YouTube videos. But it was a content medium that we kind of, we had an itch that we wanted to scratch. But we didn't want it to be just like every other podcast. So that's our rule. If we're going to do something, we're going to make sure it's not like everything else in the industry. So we really had to get inspired 
And rather than going and listening to a lot of other kind of marketing podcasts, what we did instead is we asked ourselves, well, who actually do we enjoy listening to just from like an audio point of view, not from like a marketing point of view. And every single day we drive back from the office and we always have on Greg James radio one show. And we like wet ourselves. We think like Greg James is like the so best fair. DJ. In the world. <laughs> Don't know if that's a generation thing. Probably people that are going to disagree with us on that. But we love Greg James. So we thought, well, what if we kind of took some of what he was doing with his guests? Because he gets his guests to do some crazy stuff, some kind of big names. Yeah. Can we apply that to our kind of industry? And that's what we would always, that's what we tell people when they're like stuck for ideas. Stop looking at other people in your industry look outside of your industry and implement that in your own. So yeah, that's where the podcast came from. It's, it's, it's been brilliant. I've really enjoyed listening to it. And I know lots of people who actually are in our audience at Marketed Live have downloaded it. And I know that I've had conversations with them about it. So, you know, congratulations to you guys for doing a great job there with, with that podcast. Um, what's, what's next for you guys and what's next in marketing? What's the next big thing that we shouldn't be paying attention to yet because it's not been invented or that we need to let someone else work out first? You know, what's, what, what should people keep their eye on? Um, well, I've been bots, to be honest, at the moment. Bots is... Um kind of has piqued our interest, I would say. We're not kind of big into getting completely distracted with new things. I think we would rather let other people kind of test them out first, like get oversaturated and then swoop in and do it something completely right. different. Because like you're not on IGTV yet, right? So that's like the new shiny thing that's, that's yeah. being talked about as we record this. Yeah. yeah. Let's face it, there's a lot of crap on it already. Yeah. So, so much, much crap. crap. So much right. crap. So it's funny, like at the very start of this year, because we have been guilty of that. We can like, hold our hands and admit we've been guilty of getting distracted by things in the past. At the start of this year, we just said to ourselves, look, what, what do we actually want to grow? What do we want to be known for? And it was, the answer was like YouTube. We spoke to a lot of different people that we kind of looked up to, got a lot of advice. And for us, it was just YouTube is the platform yeah. that we really enjoy creating content for. And it's rewarding, right? Like you create something on IGTV or Facebook, and it's gone. Like YouTube people are still discovering us with content that we created two years ago. And for us, there's not another platform that kind of offers that no. as a benefit of creating content for it. So for us, we were super focused on YouTube. If something else drops on YouTube, we're going to be all over it. Mm. Instagram TV, just because it's Instagram as a platform, we're using it, but we kind of call it our like ticking along platform. We are doing our stories and we're posting on that but we're not worried about getting likes or conversions or sales from Instagram. Yeah, and it's almost, um, it's a word I'm looking for. Like nice to kind of let that go as a word. For yeah. That. Well, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Like it's almost nice to not have to worry. You don't have to pressure. Everything. Because yes. like if you, right. I'm going to think of that if word. We, if, you, if you're listening to this. Liberating. And, liberating. There we go. <laughs> If you were to go on Instagram stories now and produce the most kick-ass video series ever for Instagram stories, you know what? You could probably make a really good name for yourself and, and build up quite a good following. That's exactly what happened on Snapchat. A lot of influencers these days grew because of Snapchat because they jumped on it and did amazing stories on there. So to a degree, like, yes, if you jump on the new shiny thing, you could be that influencer or you could be that person that tried to be the influencer wasted a year of the life and didn't really get the return they were hoping for and just being in the same position they were one year before mm -hmm. so it's a playoff like if you're gonna go all in you need to be in that like top 10 that jumps on it and makes them up like facebook live like the, there's facebook live experts now right, that we know that are at the top of their game, but they, they kind of went all in on that. And mm. if they hadn't, if they just half-assed that, or if they jumped in later, or they hadn't created, created great content on that, they wouldn't be those influencers. And we know a thousand other marketers for every one that is an influencer that jumped on the bandwagon, but not quite enough. <laughs> so it's yeah. like all or nothing. Yeah. But to be honest, the best strategy is just to focus on what's working and grow that and not get distracted because every freaking day there's a new feature mm -hmm. on some platform there is at the minute for for sure 
you guys are so wise. You've got such wise heads for like in your twenties. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's That's all the nice... <laughs> 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 um, right. I've got a few quick questions I want to ask you before we finish uh, for for today. Um, I say quick. That's up to you in how long it takes you to, take you to answer. Really, uh, if it's but... Pete answering, they're not going to be quick. I'll just I'll let you know, you know that now. But let's let's go let's go with this right. Firstly, uh, let's talk about the alien in the room. Who is that behind you? <laughs> this is Elvis, our Elvis. alien. And what relation is he to Alan? Is he a relation to Alan? Um, I think I think Elvis is batch two. I think Alan's original alien. Right. Yeah, we debuted the aliens at Marked Live, so there yeah. you go. They've been there to a go. few other events since. And what about Anne? Is that is and batch two? Pardon? Is and batch two? No, yeah. no, and is and batch is, one, and is three. batch three, and is batch three. Yeah, if you don't know who and is, go and look at Christine Gritman <laughs> and uh, basically <laughs> her entire story. Haters, you know what, Christine, though, and is and is and and just had the time one. of his life, though, hasn't yeah. he? So, yeah. recently, if you don't know what the hell's going on, if you're talking <laughs> about why it, would be? Why would you? <laughs> we, um, we, we, um, we often have themes for our talk, and a, th a talk we did was all about, um. The algorithms and how to defeat the evil alien algorithms and it was like a space invaders theme and we had these uh five foot tall inflatable aliens to give out uh and obviously paul stole one um i mean one one and we gave a few away in san diego for social media marketing up and this um lady called christine Gritman, she's really really awesome check her out she basically has taken one. She's called the and because Actually, it is batch two. It is batch two. Batch two. I thought it was. Yeah. Uh, and is because it's like in between Andrew and Pete, and <laughs> the best third of Andrew and Pete uh, team. And she's taken this like everywhere. She's got selfies just in all the places. I thought it was short for Andrew, to be honest. Nah. Mm. <laughs> and okay, so we you were on the, the whole like influencers tour. So there's like all these social. like influencers just like taking selfies with and all the time. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Can I just it's say I did warn you that Pete would not true. give a short answer to what. Right. That's, that, that's that's true. That's true. But that's what editing is for. You said edit the videos, right? So that's what that's for. <laughs> here's, here's, some other, talking, here's some of the quick questions, right? Weirdest campaign you've ever worked on. Oh, weirdest campaign I've ever worked on. We once done this whole. Um, this whole dollar shave style video for a packaging company. That was fun. We had like camera crews. We had like crazy stuff going on in the background. Um, that kind of stuff. Didn't anything weirder than that. And we we sent, ten... oh, we sent cabbages. We mm -hmm. sent cabbages to people. For because. That worked really well. Yeah. We sent sponges to people. 10 sponges, less than 50 quid budget, five grand recurring contract. Yeah. For a cleaner. That's I'm glad right. it was a cleaner. Yeah. It would have been weird if it was an accountant. But you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Who do you most admire? You. Thank you. <laughs> no, we did you know. What do you mean no? Say what do you mean no? <laughs> you say me and say no. <laughs> You're gonna change your answer to who's the nice one now, aren't you? <laughs> We don't do short answers. That was apart that was from amazing. apart from me. Who do you most admire? Yeah, apart from the amazing Paul, we admire so many people for so many different reasons. Mm. We love Andy Crestadina from just like a tech point of SEO, just He's really so smart. smart content marketer point of view. Jay Kunzo from a creativity creative and point speaker of view. point of view. Amy Landino for video stuff. Like we were following her years ago. She really, really helped us with video stuff back in the day. I love Mark Schaefer and Anne Hanley, how they taught. Yeah. They're, they're just yeah. amazing. I love uh, how Mike they, Morrison Anne has Hanley. just smashed that niche of membership. Yeah, I love yeah. how Mike Morrison smashed that niche. Mark Asquith always has so many like clever... Mark is so smart. He's like Legend. the Legend. smartest guy. Just, but he's very, very him. humble yeah. about it. I love I how love Janet that. Murray can just get anyone to talk about anything online. She makes any topic mm -hmm. engaging. Like from all of our podcasts, like some people will tweet like, hey, I've been on this fun podcast with Andrew and Pete. But she was like, 
Oh, uh, I, I, um, one of the got discussion- better paint in the Guardian as a result. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, it's crazy. Like, she, she has a way to make everything engaging. I feel like so there's some people we haven't mentioned that. Oh, no, no, it's really going to be a lot of people. You don't, no, you don't have to worry about it. I'll tell you what, send me your list. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> right, Martin Live 2017, you were voted from our feedback, uh, you know, I, I'll have to say for the purpose of the podcast, one of the top speakers. <laughs> um... What did you learn from the event itself? Hmm. How to bribe an audience into voting you the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did we learn? What did we learn? It was, just, a, it was a long time. It was a time ago now. It's like a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really loved Dawn's talk on SEO. I feel like that one from a technical point of view was really, really cool. Um, what else? What are our main takeaways? We'll be throwing us on the spot here. That's a tough question. <laughs> it's all right. So nearly a year ago, you can say you've forgotten it all. That's fine. Um, you're coming to this year. Some great talks, though. To be fair, there was some really really good speakers. Some great ones. And loads of people lo- loved Dawn as well. You know, in terms of like impact, you did definitely have a massive impact on people. I think, particularly for people whose specialism wasn't in SEO. But of the speakers that you've seen listed uh, is there any one particular speaker that you're looking forward to the most i am looking forward to hearing holly from the beano mm-hmm. uh, yeah that should be fun if yeah. it's not fun i'll be really disappointed if, yeah <laughs> <laughs> just to like get the perspective of someone who has that much of a cool brand i know it is um, cool, it? Like, that is a cool brand um look forward to hearing chris ma as always chris ma is a great speaker that we've seen who, yeah. else, who else do you have again? Remind us. Uh, Chris Strub. Chris Strub! Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's going to be I've epic. Never, I've He's never seen so many good things about him speak. Yeah, I've never seen him speak. So yeah, I'm like, really excited to see that one. And, really and if excited. anyone, I'm going to lay, lay down the challenge. If anyone can beat him to be the top tweeter of the event, like, hats off to you. People will oh, do okay. the count. Because well, you know, he, he's an insane, monstrously insane tweeter. You know May King. She's already uh, riding it. Oh, she she versus Chris. Chris has to spend the night with speaking, so <laughs> she's got the advantage there. Who knows? Who knows? Right. Um, okay, final question. Um, uh, it's really just sort of throwing something back at, at you, really. Um, you might need a drink for this bit. Uh, a stiff one? No, no, no. Preferably be just, just water. In your podcast, you have a, a section called Tool Not Drool. <laughs> so I'd like you to take drill. cool don't drool that's, that's it. I only listen to it once um, I'd like you to take a mouthful of water or whatever it is that you've got in there oh whilst I ask you the final question are you ready? am I going to do this? you're both doing it come yeah, on we're both doing it oh, right, come on God. I wonder if we're going to say the same one <laughs> <laughs> okay I think Andrew took more than Pete just <laughs> looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, without spilling anything, what's your favourite tool? The Google Work. Pulse. <laughs> Agora Pulse. Agora Pulse. Mm. Yeah, excellent. Pete, yours. <laughs> That's what I love. <laughs> Convert kit. Convert kit. <laughs> I know what you're saying, but I know. Convert it's, kit. Yay! With the moving. Simple but effective. If you think we haven't practiced that, I of course maybe. you've practiced it. <laughs> I want to. I want to know exactly how many times it took you to decide that that was definitely a game to 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 put in. Oh, as soon as we realised drill rhymed with tool, we had it. Yeah. <laughs> There's some games that we could come up with the names before we even think what they are. <laughs> I, this one that was called For Pete's Sake. We just, <laughs> yeah. we just came up with that because that was a phrase. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Of, so there's two rounds that I like where you've got the, uh, the I don't know whether you call them like a, uh, a jingle or a sting or whatever, right? But oh, yeah. um, I really like Blankety Tweet. Oh, um, uh, so amazing. Uh, so amazing. 
We just like break down laughing about one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we just record those like raw and just send them off to our editor. Just like the raw files was like cracking up and everything. And they just off make they go. those. Mm. Yeah. They obviously they obviously work <laughs> very hard. The other one that I really like is um the quickest marketing tip of the week. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> You could you could have been a choir boy when you were younger. Amazing. <laughs> now it's time for the quickest marketing tip of the week. It's not what I'm missing. All in. <laughs> That's what I wanted. <laughs> Fantastic. It's funny because it's not quick. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. Um. Guys, thank you so much for being on this version of Marketed Not Live. Um, tell people quickly, like how, I mean, well, you can just search you, you know, and find you, but where's the best place to get you? Where do you want people to go to actually see your stuff? Yes, YouTube, please, which is androp.tv will take you right to our YouTube channel yep. where you can hit that big red subscribe button. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but all Literally. the other social platforms, we are on them. We've even if got you... our own URL just for podcast reasons. Yeah, androp.tv. Type that into your browser. Boom. Marketing oh. entertainment for the rest of the days watching, doing pleasure. It's good that I said that after saying earlier that it was our focus, wasn't it? It's yeah. like, there we go. It must be pride said It Twitter. all ties up. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I mentioned previously about that blogging video, about the blogging strategy that everyone should go watch. Mm -hmm. It's funny, once you've got the focus, to, it's like, it's self, um, self con not self conscious. Self fulfilling prophecy? Maybe no? that's the one I'm thinking self of. You're, self you're more self conscious of it, so you bring it up more. Yeah. There good. we go. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. It's been terrific. Thanks, everybody, for watching this version of Marketed Not Live. Don't forget, if you want a ticket for the event, all you've got to do is go to Marketed Not Live. Not Marketed Not Live. That's completely wrong. Go to Marketed.Live. I knew this would be a problem when we thought we were being clever with the name of the podcast. Marketed.Live, <laughs> and you can get your ticket to the event where you can meet the wonderful Andrew and Pete amongst all sorts of other friends. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, please give us a review on the podcast platform of your choice and uh, share the love with as many people as possible because basically we want to sell out the event and we want to just have an amazing time. Thanks again to Andrew Pete. Thanks to the podcast websites, our sponsor. We'll see you next time.